Crews at the Chernobyl plant in Ukraine are nearly three decades into a decommissioning job that experts say could take a century to finish. They face high levels of radiation daily. The government is trying to keep them safe in various ways. The workers live in a specially built town 50 kilometers from the facility. They take a free train to the plant. A nurse is on board should they need any help. The government care goes much further than that, though. This edition of Nuclear Watch is looking at how people fled, uh, how people tied to the cleanup of the Fukushima Daiichi accident here in Japan are trying to learn lessons from, from Chernobyl. NHK World's Mamoru Ichikawa went there to find out more. Already origins from Japan, visited Ukraine to learn how officials manage the risks workers face. The Japanese government has asked Professor Ryuji Okazaki to advise the operator of Fukushima Daiichi on ways to protect crews from radiation. We really want to learn from what you are doing here in Ukraine. A government official told Okazaki their practices are based on lessons from the past. Chernobyl was the world's worst nuclear accident. The Soviet Union rushed thousands of poorly equipped workers to the plant to tackle the crisis. Official figures at the time said 31 of them died within a few months. Many others became seriously ill. Government leaders in Ukraine started implementing changes after the country gained independence following the fall of the Soviet Union. The most important thing is to protect the life and health of workers. Thorough measures are needed to manage their safety and well-being to prevent the risk of accidents or illness. Professor Kazaki went to see how medical staff carry out health screenings on the workers. They periodically check for more than 200 types of illness, including heart disease. Doctors also focus on the eyes. That's where the effects of radiation usually appear. They monitor balance too. Health checkups are an indispensable aspect of our work. We're very grateful to medical institutions. Ukazaka learned that one national institution manages the results of these screenings. The centralized system enables doctors to quickly identify abnormalities and respond. The situation is quite different at Fukushima Daiichi. Screening workers is left up to the contractors that supply the facility with clues. They are not obliged to submit data to the plant's operator or any national institution. Professor Kazaki says Japan has much to learn from what's happening at Chernobyl. Japan hasn't decided how far it wants to go to monitor the health of workers at Fukushima Daiichi. Ukraine provides an example we should follow. Okazaki says Japanese leaders should introduce a centralized system to collect health data right away. He's now preparing to submit his report to the government. Mamoru Ichikawa, Energy World, Chernobyl, Ukraine. On March 11th, an earthquake and tsunami sparked a disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant in Japan. With cooling systems knocked out, three reactors melted down. In those first days, the only thing that military and civilian authorities could do was to spray water to try and prevent further damage to the reactors. Today, the immediate crisis has passed, but Fukushima is still a very dangerous place. 
Thousands of workers are currently on site to conduct damage assessments and cleanup operations. In some areas, radiation levels are high enough to kill within minutes. Workers must wear masks and protective suits everywhere they go. Here, they're spraying suppressant to keep down radioactive dust. Aerial surveys reveal a plume of fallout to the northwest of the plant. When the crisis began, thousands living in these areas were evacuated to temporary shelters. Now, some may not be able to return home for decades. The Tokyo Electric Power Company has apologized to the people of Japan for the accident. But these mea culpas haven't gone down well with the Japanese public. TEPCO and the government have both come under fire. The Prime Minister Naoto Kan resigned in large part because of the response to the crisis. But there are signs of progress. TEPCO recently installed an elaborate filtration system to remove radiation from the water. And workers are assembling a cover over the Unit 1 reactor. Similar structures will eventually be built around Units 2 and 3, and by winter, TEPCO hopes the damaged reactors will be able to stay cool on their own, without adding more water. In many ways, Fukushima is a local disaster, but the impact stretches across all of Japan. The country depends on nuclear for over a quarter of its electricity and has faced shortages since the quake. Plans to increase its nuclear supply are now in doubt. Fukushima is the worst nuclear crisis in 25 years, and that means it's also received global attention. The International Atomic Energy Agency has visited Japan to survey the damage, and other nations are reconsidering their positions on nuclear power. Germany has decided to get out of nuclear altogether, while the U.S. and China are undergoing lengthy safety reviews. Back at Fukushima, what's going to happen in the long term is still very unclear. Somehow, the fuel from these reactors will have to be removed, and the Japanese government has vowed to clean up at least some of the land around the plant. One thing is for certain, the accident is going to stay with Japan and the world for decades to come. Ähm, ich werde immer wieder gefragt, woran liegt es, dass du so oft so aufgedreht bist? Die Leute glauben, ein guter Mix hat Höhen und Tiefen, aber das ist falsch. So ein Mix sollte nur Höhen haben, Baby. Und jetzt macht euch bereit für eine Audioreise in das weißglühende Zentrum des Adrenalins.
Thank you. 